Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're packing up the bushwhacker and getting ready for our upcoming camping trip. Now we have single digits during the day times and some below zero Fahrenheit temps at night. So it's a little too cold for me to be messing around with camera gear. So I'm not gonna bring you along for this trip. What I figured we could do is talk about some of the tips and tricks that we have for propane systems to ensure that they're gonna work no matter what the temperatures are. So it doesn't matter what system we're working on, whether it's on a camper or not. Having a good grasp of the fundamentals is far superior than just a list of tips and tricks. Now the propane system on a camper is relatively simple, but there's a few things about it that could be really helpful if we understand them better. So the components of an RV propane system are all pretty similar. They consist of a tank, a regulator, a distribution system, pipes or rubber hoses, and that goes to point of use. That's where you'll find a propane appliance like a furnace or a stove. This first component that we're talking about, the regulator, is responsible for taking tank pressure and converting it to the type of pressure that we burn. Tank pressure is between 150 and 200 PSI. Most of our appliances like around a half a pound per square inch. So the regulator's job is to regulate that pressure. Now the first tip I have for you is that there's a safety device in here. It will trip and shut the propane off if it senses sudden bursts of propane coming out of the tank. It's obviously there to prevent catastrophic gas leaks. Sometimes though, we trigger it when we open the tank too quickly or even when the tank, uh, the gas in the tank expands suddenly. So if you're having propane trouble, one of the first things that we do is we shut our tank off, we disconnect the line that goes from your tank to the regulator, we let it sit for a minute or two, reattach it and open the tank up slowly. This little tip has saved a lot of people on some camping trips. You can avoid bringing your camper in for service by trying that simple tip. So this camper has three points of use. It has a furnace, a propane stove, and a low flow port. I get a lot of questions about this propane furnace. These are a huge addition to campers. This is not the same as like a Mr. Buddy unit inside the camper. This is thermostatically controlled with a heat exchanger. It exhausts the fumes, which include a ton of water vapor. When you burn propane, it produces water vapor. So this provides dry heat in the camper. Those ventless heaters, you have to provide your own ventilation inside the camper. Otherwise your windows freeze and the water comes down. This is an excellent addition to a camper. So a propane stove is an excellent diagnostic tool. If you're having trouble with your propane, one of the first things that I do is come back here and try to run the stove. If you have a low, steady blue flame, you know your tank, your regulator, the hose that comes back here is working fine. Chances are the problem is with a specific appliance. If you have no flame, red flame, or flames that are sputtering, your gas might be low, you might need to bleed the line by letting this run for a bit, or you could be having one of these cold weather issues that we're gonna talk about soon. So these low flow ports are really, really convenient. And I would say three out of four of the problems that people have contacted me about, it has to do with trying to regulate it a second time. This is a low flow port. This gas pressure has already been regulated. So if you're gonna connect a device to this, like a generator, a fire pit, or even a grill, you're gonna to wanna to use a hose that does not have an extra regulator. You can't regulate the propane twice. So you're gonna need a hose like this that does not have a regulator, instead of a hose like this that has an additional regulator. So read your owner's manual. Uh, most of the time these are sold separately, but this port is not gonna work if you try to add a second regulator to it. So the last component we have to talk about is the propane tank. And this is actually where the magic happens. Up until a couple years ago, I just thought this was like a gas tank on a car. But there's actually something that goes on in these tanks that is critically important to the proper functioning of our propane system. 
So these tanks hold liquid propane. They're LP tanks, but we don't burn liquid propane. We burn propane gas. So the liquid propane actually boils at a very low temperature. So they fill this tank with liquid, and then the top section is what's made of the gas. Now when we remove that gas to burn, it lowers the pressure in the tank and the propane boils again and replenishes the gas supply. So this functioning will take place until there's no more liquid to boil off. There's nothing to vaporize and then your tank pressure goes down and you have to have it refilled. So understanding how this process works can really help us out in cold weather. See, the colder air temperatures will lower the pressure inside the tank. It also slows down the boiling process. So the problem that most people have is they're running a furnace or something big, like a fire pit, and they exhaust the reservoir of gas at the top of the tank. They do that before the boiling process can repressurize and their propane system stops working. You'll hear people refer to this as a frozen tank, but propane doesn't freeze until it's like negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit. What they're actually experiencing is a slowed down rebounding, and there's a lot we can do to address that. The first thing that you can do is switch to a bigger propane tank. A lot of teardrops have 5 pound, 11 pound tanks. Mine came with a 20 pound tank. I will go to a 30 pound tank for a cold weather trip. It's not because I'm going to burn this much propane. I won't use anywhere near the capacity of this tank. But a larger tank has a larger reservoir of gas at the top. So while your furnace or large appliance is cycling, it actually gives more time for the liquid to rebound and the tank to pressurize. So the larger tank actually serves as a larger gas reservoir at the top. Another tip that can help us out is showing up to our cold weather trip with a higher fill rate on the tank. You can have these topped off at Trading's Post or Tractor Supply. You don't have to swap the whole tank out. But when a tank is a little low level, it's got to do more vaporizing to pressurize the larger volume. That's going to slow the cycle down. So when we show up with a high fill rate, it's going to have a faster cycle speed and the overall tank pressure will be a little higher as well. Now this upgrade is usually really simple. The 30 pound tank has the same diameter as the 20 pound tank. It's just a little bit taller, so it drops right in this holster. If you follow those two principles of the larger tank and the higher state of fill, this is going to take care of 95% of your cold weather issues. They do sell a tank heater. That's nice if you have shore power, but it will gobble up your battery. I have never needed a tank heater by sticking with the larger tank at the higher state of fill. I've heard people say that they've used an electric blanket to warm this up in an emergency and it worked really well. I prefer to bring an extra tank. I store it in my tow vehicle. If I feel like I'm having a rebound problem, I'll swap tanks because that one has had plenty enough time to pressurize. It's also probably a little warmer. If you do up, end up in an emergency situation, put it on the passenger seat of your car. Start your car and turn the heat on for a while. Adding just a little bit of increased temperature to these tanks will pressurize them and you'll be back up and running in no time at all. So I want you to be able to know the exact amount of propane that's in your tank, but these gauges are no good. These cheap gauges are pressure gauges, and we already talked about how the tank pressure is gonna try to get to the same point, whether there's 20% liquid propane or 80% liquid propane. That's how the tank works. So these are never accurate, and they move more with the air temperature than they actually do the fill level of your tank. Some people get confused because we've always been able to trust these gauges that are on our tanks at home. But this sort of propane gauge is mechanical. There's an actual float inside the tank. It's a completely different setup than these. So in my closing scene, I'll point to the video where I explain the system that I use. I love it. Otherwise, we're gonna have to work on weighing the propane tanks. 
So I hope you guys found these tips helpful. Please include your cold weather tips in the comment section below. We can all learn a lot when we share our tips and tricks. I'm gonna include some playlists of other hacks that I do with the camper, but I'm gonna include a video I did on the Mopeka propane sensor. Don't trust those pressure sensors, they do not work. So this device has really helped me out a lot and increased my capability in all weather conditions. I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.